Welcome to another sparkling edition of Plank of the Week. We've been sitting here for quite a long time, so there's a bit of giggling going on. I'm not quite sure why they're all giggling, because it's a very serious show, this. We are here at Talk Radio TV. Uh, we're going to be very serious. There's been a lot of plankery this week. Uh, and, of course, we're also in an election period, so we won't be able to, if you're wondering why, uh, nobody's being named who's actually running for election. That's because we're not allowed to do that. But don't worry, uh, even without those people, uh, there's plenty of others to go at. And I'm going to ask, uh, I think, Kevin this week to kick us off. Kevin O'Sullivan, of course, Dawn Neeson. Welcome. Kevin, Thank who's you. your first plank? Uh, I'm going to go for the headmaster of Batley Grammar School yeah, yes. in Yorkshire. His name is Gary Kibble, who left it for about three nanoseconds before unequivocally apologising for the fact that one of his teachers had the temerity to try and arm his pupils with some knowledge yes. about the world. Yeah. So this teacher we now know was teaching a lesson on blasphemy and, as an example, was going to show the kids a picture of the cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad that triggered the Charlie Hebdo shootings. Mm. Apparently the teacher did point out, if you find this offensive, you don't have to look at it. But what this teacher is trying to do is to impart knowledge mm. to his kids. Uh, and uh, within seconds, when the uh, Muslim community, suddenly a lot of men, Muslim men, appeared outside the gate saying their parents were, didn't see any mums there. Many of whom weren't parents of yeah. the kids yeah, at yeah, school, exactly. by the way. Uh, and, and no women, where were they? And, and if, they yeah. were, if they were the parents, it was just the dads, right. there were no mums there. So it was a kind of a dubious demonstration. But they and were quite going crazy, well. saying, you know, you've insulted our religion, mm. uh, you've caused great offence. And the headmaster immediately immediately, uh, unequivocally apologised yeah. for the showing of this cartoon uh, and suspended the teacher. The teacher since then we now know has had to go into hiding, yeah. he's under police protection with his partner well, and, he's his, in fear of his, life, and his kids, yeah. he's in fear of his life. And here Gary Kibble, here's the thing, he did absolutely nothing wrong and you showed the backbone of a jellyfish. You should have stuck by your teacher in a free country with freedom of speech. He did nothing wrong and for that you're not only plank of the year, you're plank of the damn century. Yeah and also there was some other um, sort of nefarious goings on around that whole scenario wasn't there? There was. I mean the one that I was going to nominate as well but it, it ties in seamlessly with Kevin. See we're working as a team. Yeah, I like that. A team I like to see that. That's what I like it's to see. Twin pronged attack. It's good. Twin pronged. It's the first and possibly the last time. Um, but um, the charity, they're a charity called Purpose of Life mm. and they were part of the demonstration outside the school and they actually because none of us would have known who this teacher was right. so he might have been a bit safe mm. but little kids as well remember. Yeah. They they actually named him on social media. So by putting his name out there, this the, which you had, can then use to find his address. He's had death threats. He's had yeah. to be taken into police protection for his own good. And 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 they 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 think this is fine. They think this is okay. Yeah. Given what happened a year ago to that teacher in France who was beheaded yeah. for doing, I mean, it was a mistaken identity as well. It wasn't even yeah. that teacher. Right. I know. But given what happened then. And it's like, well, you know, what I can't, uh, no pun intended, get my head around with this one is the fact that, OK, everyone is up in arms about a teacher showing children a cartoon. And I get that it may cause offence. Mm. However... So what? Well, people are having a go at that. But they're not so... They're wrong to have a go at it because yeah, there's, mm. no, there's no, nothing wrong with causing offence. No, and there's no law against blasphemy in this country any there longer isn't. either. And also there is no specifically protected group of people uh, no, for uh, whom no. a yeah. different set of but rules applies. Your demonstrators, not... Dawn, I mean, they, they said that no one should have the right to insult our religion. Well, nobody wants to insult their religion. Nobody wants to offend them. That We don't want to go out of our way to do this. But you guys are fundamentally wrong. We do have the right to insult mm. your we, we religion. Do, it is we don't have Sharia law. Mm. We have British law. It is Get used to it. 2021, yeah. and as I said, we don't have a blasphemy law, and it's slightly ridiculous that showing children a cartoon in class in a lesson, and as far Which as which is also, by the way, a legitimate news item to discuss as, because of what happened as yeah, a result of it. And as far right? as we're all aware, it was completely in context. There was no sort of like, oh my God, look at yeah, this. Yeah. It's completely in context. But there was, I mean, there was one person I can't remember his name, but he was on Julia's show during the week, Julia Hart Brewer's show, and he actually had to be asked four times that surely beheading someone is worse than showing yes. children a cartoon. Yeah, I, four I remember that. Times 
mind. You said in the end, concede it was. He, he yes. said, well, yeah, okay, you might, you might just <laughs> have a point. In the end. <laughs> you might just have a point. I know. I mean, also, I, I mean, just... you know, there were those as well who were trying to make out that this teacher was in some way doing uh, something racist, right? When in fact, it became clear from his Muslim neighbour, actually, that he's got very good um, contacts in the in the community. His, his Muslim neighbour and he are good mates. He takes them, uh, he gives them Eid cards and all that sort yeah. of thing. You know, it's not as if he's some kind of this is closet nothing, racist it's who's nothing trying to drum to do with up racism. something, you know. It's trying to drag this country into some sort of medieval hellhole yeah. that, that is just but also, they're trying to anywhere. cancel him that's yeah. what they're trying but to they're do well they're trying to cancel him but also this guy's life has been ruined but it's, it's doing ruined. nothing also for the Muslim community of Britain no, because most absolutely. Muslims in this country don't act like that well they were, exactly. inter they were interviewing genuine parents of children yeah. at the school who have signed a petition asking for this teacher to yeah. be reinstated well that's the other thing that this, this headmaster has done he sent all the other kids home so well, effectively, is, I mean, all the people the who thought their kids were going back to school, yeah. they've now gone gone yeah. home again, and they're not going back yeah. to the school until after the Easter yeah. holidays. Yeah, and he has effectively gone along. He's basically with shut the, it down. He's gone along with the baying mob outside yeah. and cancelled this poor teacher. And this poor teacher, it's not just the fact that he's lost his job; he won't be ever be going back to Batley Grammar. No, he he's had to move out he? of his house. He'll never yeah. be going back mm. uh, to his house. Uh, and uh, his life is ruined. His life, it's not yeah. just his job, his life yeah. is ruined. He'll be on a fatwa for the rest of his yeah. life. Yeah, he will. He and will that, indeed. And that and headmaster has gone along with and it. And here's Outrageous. another question for you, right? How is it that these guys uh, can now demonstrate, I think it's about five days in a row, uh, at what would normally be considered an illegal gathering? Well, because we're in the midst hello. of COVID, aren't we? Yeah. I mean, how is that possible? Uh, how is, is it that the uh, West yeah. Yorkshire police, who yeah. have not exactly covered themselves in glory in the past, don't seem to think that uh, there's there. a problem. A group of people very closely together, only wearing masks you suspect to hide their identity, yeah. shouting. Right. I mean, breaking every rule in the book. And I mean, the I'm not one that, of there. those people that has a go at people for breaking COVID rules, but it does seem a bit unusual it's, well, it's, that the police look, aren't breaking it up. It's one law. It? It's one law for peaceful women on Clapham Common. Yeah. And it's another law for a group of men, and it looked more like a lynch mob, lynch mob to me. Well, than they're parents. also making threats a lot of them as well. Yeah, right? shouting. Yeah. Who's your first uh, plank then? I quite like that one actually. Yeah, I'm going to agree with one. Kevin. Oh yeah, my well, God, you can vote in, for that one to be the winner later twice if you wish. Twice in one show, Kev. Um, right, okay, who shall I go for first? It's sport for choices. Yes. Right, I'm going to go for a woman, and I'm sorry, girls, I hate nominating women. Hang on a second. What happened to, did we do. Was that all of mine then? Yes. Why did he just interrupt well, me? Well, how come? So you just butted in with somebody I didn't want to be in it? Hey? What? We're going for Gary Kibble, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Gary right. Kibble's the plank. Yeah. We just, so what we just, was all the other stuff about? Well, we were just well, augmenting the reason why Gary Kibble yeah. was a plank, because of all the other stuff that happened uh, around it. Right. It was right. if right. you know. sensitive, we isn't it? You oh. said something about some charity that was organising yes. the Yes. Yeah. yeah, but they're, they're not, not in it, though, are they? No. no are you no, nominating just, them or not? No, she's not. Dear everybody, she's, oh, okay. dear everybody. It Did was, you not get the email? It was Mr Tibble that Kevin was Kibble. nominating. Kibble. Kibble. Tibble, Kibble, whatever. In any case, Kevin nominated him, and it did it so well. Are you two feeling all right? I've forgotten his name. Maybe you guys should have a vaccination. It's For Kibble. God's sake, it's Gary Kibble. 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 Any case, How Kibble. That helps. Gary Kibble. Well, Kevin, you sold it so well, I've forgotten. <laughs> Get on with the yours Kevin. now. Come on. Okay. Hey. I, can't, I can't deal with your uh, failing mind. Car carry on. <laughs> oh, there's only one mind failing around here. Yeah, and that's Dawn's. <laughs> Come on, Dawn. What's your first? Can you remember your first nomination? Well, you can't remember the conversation we had before we started, <laughs> so I don't know what you're talking about. Well, no, no I, I don't know why we ended up talking about the charity and the demonstrators. Because, because it's the same story. Well, basically, because Mike and I's points were more interesting you, than yours. No, no, you wanted to nominate that lot out. No. I got, I got in there first. No, no, no. No. No, you missed, yeah. the, you missed the conversation where Get we said yourself, not, Ken. that I'm we're going with Kibble. Well, this is not very interesting I'm radio <laughs> or television, so <laughs> shut up. And let's, hear, and let's hear what you've got to say, Dawn. Okay, Jesus Dawn. Christ, these two have been together too long. It has to break up with us and bring in two other people. Right, okay, any case, I'm going to nominate, sorry, girls, a woman, and this one is Jennifer R. Curie. Oh, yes. She is a 36-year-old businesswoman yeah. who um, has... Great business, that. 36. <laughs> She's 56 if she's a day. <laughs> who had, um, that's really sexist, who had a what? four no, she's, year... She's lying about her age. Why is that sexist? Yeah, why? Who had, oh, shut up, you don't encourage him. Who had a four-year affair, it's finally revealed, shot Cora, yeah. with Boris Johnson. This is the same woman who said she didn't have a four-year affair yes. before, but now yes. she's saying she did. Yes. Right, And okay. she's she's, right. she's obviously <laughs> being a shy and retiring feminist type. She's yes. taken four days in the Daily Mirror newspaper to give us 
all the yeah, glory. Yeah, I can't wait for tomorrow's paper. All the glory the front details. Again? I, eh? I, I now know what it's like in every cop and spit, quite literally, mm. to have an affair with a bloke that looks like a bag of washing exploded in a haystack. Yes. And it's not nice. Apparently it's he lost really... a sock. I know. This Where? Is a, yeah, well, it's a good question. Oh, no, Kevin. This, well, is, a, this is a man who's Down the back of the sofa, apparently. Yeah. Oh. A man, <laughs> a man who's trying to run the country who can't <laughs> find his own sock after right. sex. Yes. And, and basically, the sofa was in the marital home just before the wife got home. Yeah. yeah. And, and she's pretending to be some sort of, like, feminist empowering yeah, women. Yeah. And no, basically, you're just a floozy. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid so. A floozy It's plank. a very grubby story, well, also, I have to say. Also, I'd say it, it's the most boring sex scandal in the history of politics. Yeah. It's really it's just, it's boring. Not, it's not. And, and, and uh, um, uh, Boris Johnson is immune to it. Nobody cares anymore. I don't think no. they do. I mean, I think it's probably partly because nobody cares too much about what Boris does exactly in right. life. Well, I mean, he's, he's because scandal everyone proof. knows well, no that he's shocked, a bit of a womaniser. No, right? no one's shocked by no. the fact that he And cheats. nobody bought her story the last time. No, absolutely. When she said, oh, no, we were never intimate. And you go, well, okay then. I don't really care whether well, you were or not. But that's a bit like I did not have sexual yeah, relations with really that is. woman. Did, yeah. But did you hear what she said, said about their uh, foreplay routine? No. No, they, they Kevin. Read, they read uh, Shakespeare to each other. <laughs> sat around talk, they sat around reciting Macbeth and then they got it on, on the sofa just before Boris's oh. That's, I mean, also, what a great story. She's, I'll tell you what she is doing. She's actually puncturing Ew. Boris's reputation because she's actually telling us that he's actually a bit cheesy. He's not. He's no. He's not a swashbuckling kind of you know womanizer. Yeah. He's actually a bit lame. <laughs> any, a bit any, sad. But it's boring. This yeah, story, isn't it? Well, it really is boring. But any man that turns up with his helmet in his hand and has to borrow three pounds <laughs> fifty. Say off that again. <laughs> Drinks. <laughs> it's drink. not going to be good, is it? No. Kevin, his cycling helmet. What did you think I meant? <laughs> okay. He's got a mind like a sewer. He has got mic. a mind like a sewer. Gosh. But I mean, I have to say, the mirror alone is the only paper that would have ever published this yeah. story. People have been saying to me, why are you not, why, why are you not talking about it? Because it's dull. It's because boring. we all boring. know Boris I, I just get annoyed because I hate women that have affairs with married men and then <laughs> our um, Sorry, kiss and I've tell. just seen a breaking news story. Elon Musk has apparently confirmed uh, that SpaceX Starship SN11 Sexy. has exploded. exploded. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it was it's exploded. exploded. Mm. Another one of his rockets. I hope there's nobody on smoke. it. Anyway, yeah, so, I mean, also, while we're on the subject of Boris, if Kevin doesn't mind, I'm just going to bring something else in about Boris, if that's okay. Uh, yeah. well, and that is, that, is, that is that he's now spent another two and a half million quid oh, on, on this new no. um, sort oh, of, you know, yeah. ridiculous room with two flags in it and three lecterns. I mean, how does that cost two, two and a half million? million? How much does the flag room? cost? Well, I mean, the flags must have been a million each, presumably, because yeah. the rest of it, <laughs> that still leaves half a million for three lecterns how and much? a bit of paint. It's just ridiculous. I know. If you add that to the fact it's going to cost, or is costing, apparently, £200,000 to flat. redecorate the uh, Prime Minister's mm. flat mm -hmm. above number 11, actually. Yes. Uh, where, where, where do they get these astronomical price tags? From? I know. It must be that people, for, you know, sort of contractors going, I've got that idiot Boris Johnson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, Rack up the bill. But it's like the old, it's like the old uh, stories about the Ministry of Defence, isn't it? You know, you've got to buy a couple of toilet seats. How much are they? A 55 quid. Yeah, right, OK, then. We'll have a thousand. <laughs> and you go, OK, then. Well, we've got to kit out the Royal Navy, haven't we? Yeah. You know, a couple of hammers. Yeah, they're coming at 120 apiece. <laughs> And, you, and they just pay it. I, I would like that job. I mean, obviously, we've spent huge amounts of money on our studio, though, as yes, well, we haven't have. we? Yeah. I mean, no expense. Well, funnily enough, somebody did say this morning, why does he not just stand in front of a green screen and he can put any kind of background behind yeah. him that he wants, yeah. which would include mood backgrounds. Mood you know, background. so like, if he's going to come on and be kind of downbeat, he could yeah. have a sort of a moody, yeah. you know, dark sky <laughs> behind him. Or he could just change it yeah. uh, if he's got something good to say and he's all upbeat. And yeah. he could have like, you know, the Teletubbies. He's got an announcement about holidays. It's uh, the palm trees in the back. Yeah, and then you'd, also, you'd always have the opportunity to, to hack into it and put Jennifer Arcuri's uh, face say, behind him. Perfect, as he's, uh, wouldn't he be various brainless blonde <laughs> I'll tell you what's funny, though. Only you can say that. I What's know, funny about the Mirror and Jennifer are curious. They've obviously spent a few. How much do you reckon they've paid for that? Well, you, you wow. and I were discussing this earlier, and I think on reflection, you're probably nearer the mark. I was thinking 50, but then again, 50, I don't 000. think they've got that kind of then money. Then again, no one else would want No, them. I reckon uh, more yeah. like 15, 15 one, five. one five. Yeah. I don't think so. Uh, but the interesting thing about it is that uh, the Mirror, of course, think that they've really sort of dealt a hammer blow to the, pri to yeah. the Tory yeah, Prime right. Minister's yeah. reputation. The man with no Nobody morals. Gives a damn. He's got no morals. <laughs> I'm like, 
these yeah, these people, know, though, all, these, yeah. all these lefties around Boris, they get, they suddenly become all sort of Victorian. Yeah, yeah. Just, we don't even know how many children yeah. he's got. That's a disgrace. They didn't mind. Nobody cares. They didn't mind how many marriages and women that Jeremy Corbyn had. Oh, well, he's got a few. Hasn't he? He's yeah. got quite a few. Yeah. I don't absolutely. care how many kids Boris Johnson's got. It's, it's a matter of mild interest, but yeah, if he not, doesn't want not, to tell us, I don't care. It's not anybody's business, really. Boris Johnson lies. Shock. Yeah, I know. I mean, well, like all politicians, shock. But, I mean, he, you, know. but you know, he, he is sort of, he has a bit of a, a rep around women. He does not have a good track record. The, hence the, jacu the uh, Jennifer Arcuri. Jennifer Jacuzzi is a much better name, by the way. Jacuzzi Jacuzzi story doesn't work. Oh, she had a pole, didn't she? She did have a pole. She had a pole, yeah. she had a pole dancing That's pole. always a bit interesting, that. If you meet a woman who has a pole in her room, I mean, what do you think's going on there? I mean, you really run 100 miles I, in the opposite direction, wouldn't you? <laughs> obviously anyway. not. No, obviously well, not. Well, not, not, not in Boris's I mean, case. Yeah. He'd already but parked Boris his bike, he, 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 as, they, as they say. He, got, he went running in there with his helmet in his hand. He couldn't <laughs> wait for it, yeah. <laughs> You had to hang it up somewhere. Yeah. Right, I'm going to go with China as my um, China. first... China. China. As uh, China. Donald Trump would say, as my first yeah. nominee, because China seems to think um, that people like Ian Duncan Smith, Tom Tugendhat, Tory MP, Neil O'Brien, uh, Tim Loughton, all MPs, are going to be somehow troubled by the fact that they've now had sanctions issued against them, mm. which means that, one, they can't go to China. Great. Um, I'm concerned that I have not been banned by China because I want to be banned by China. I don't want to go to China. I've got no interest in going to China. I've got no interest in uh, in buying anything from China. Um, and I just think that they it's a ludicrous thing that they've done. And the reason they've done it uh, is because these people have apparently been spreading terrible propaganda <laughs> about uh, the Muslim Ouija uh, people who they've been torturing and locking up in camps. <laughs> but they say, no, we haven't. No, we haven't no, done that. Uh, That's not true. Yeah, you're not very good when it comes to human rights. Are you? Yes, mean, we are. Talk about, I mean, talk about <laughs> Boris Johnson telling lies. I mean, the entire Chinese government rests on a, an absolute tissue of lies, you know? But you, th you think, Mike, that this wasn't at all painful to the recipients of this uh, Chinese fat wall, but in fact it apparently was because Ian Duncan Smith has a holiday home in Wuhan and he won't be able to go there again. Oh, well, there, there you go. I mean, they do <laughs> say they've frozen all their assets in China. Well, yeah, I'm sorry, exactly. what assets what are they? Assets? Yeah. Yeah. Who's got assets in China? No. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I mean, although, I must say, when we first started covering the whole Wuhan crisis, I was astonished to find out that there were actually quite a few expat Brits living in Wuhan. Mm -hmm. We used to talk to one guy it's who was uh, an engineer of some kind who was working out there. I'd never even heard of Wuhan until this time last year. Well, funny, funny enough, some of them were uh, medical experts who were working at the yeah, laboratory yeah. that's supposed to be it's responsible it's for forming the coronavirus in the it first It is a huge place. city, isn't it? Yes. Here's what the Chinese charge d'affaires said this. Um, China was not the first to shoot, nor will it be passive to sub or submissive to threats from the outside. Today's world is not the world of 140 years ago. So they're jumping on the old anti-British empire bandwagon now Bloody as well. Hell. The Chinese people will not be bullied. Well, by Ian Duncan Smith. <laughs> I mean, really? I mean, nobody's going to be bullied by Ian Duncan Smith. I quite like the guy. Uh, we will not stir up trouble, but if others do, we are not afraid. What are they? What are they talking about? Oh, so it's really bad optics. Isn't yeah, it? it's just showing themselves to be really right. Yeah. I mean, why should they care whether Tom Tugendhat, yeah. a rather little-known MP well, in this country, okay. I mean, if you walked out into the street and said, do you know who Tom Tugendhat is? People would go, know. wouldn't know. You and, know. And the Chinese people go, oh, whatever. Ch I, mean, I mean, even if you, gave, if you showed his Tim picture, Loughton, you know. if you showed his picture in, in, in China, you think anyone would know who he was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Unbelievable. So that's my first nomination. However, I do have a claim to fame. Do you? I've been thrown out of China. Right. Have you? I can't go back, I don't think. I haven't Why? tried. What did you do? I, I was a... Was, still am, evidently. Did you evidently. <laughs> No, I'm... <laughs> That's quite funny, though. It isn't. It's not <laughs> What crime funny. did you commit yeah. there, then? I was, a, was still am, uh, a journalist working out there. What were you doing in China? Two, I was working. And it was... Uh, doing um, what? Daily Star special investigation. Yeah, yeah. I worked on All the... All those Chinese dispatches that I, the Daily Star was so famous for. I worked on The Sun at the time. I see. Again. Um, Again. And, and That's a great job, actually, getting sent to China for The Sun. It was. That'd it be was amazing. Uh, yeah, it was a Sunlander magazine I was out there for, basically. And it was literally, um, unfortunately, time because it coincided with the um, second anniversary of Tiananmen Square. Oh dear. Um, and they were fine with me out there for a while. I was legally working. They knew that I was a journalist. Did they have somebody following visa. you around? Yes. Mm. Uh-huh. And then they um, confiscated my passport. 
then they confiscated all the money and they moved me into a government run hotel Ugh. which was um, basically the Beijing Hilton it was it was a prison Mike they actually you you've never told this story before no, this no. is a great story it's fascinating isn't it um, they, yeah they, uh, you went into your hotel room at night mm. and um, they locked the door Oh, blimey. Mm -hmm. oh. And there was a, um, a, a, a vent, like a loft hatch in the, in the, in the ceiling above my bed. Is that how you managed to escape? I, well, no, quite. I was thrown out, literally thrown out. And, uh, um, and this loft hatch, I was convinced would move in the night. And one day I got back to the hotel room and there were footprints on the bed directly underneath this loft hatch. And then really? I had to sleep in there. Blimey. It was absolutely, frankly, scary. And, and then basically the very next day they are um, asked if I would like to be on the first plane back to Hong Kong. Yes, please. Funny enough, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Although, well, you know, so, I say that I've not had any dealings, I don't think, with China, but a, a friend of mine went to China and said they couldn't get the thought police there because they thought it was banned. Mm -hmm. So I think there the thought go. police might be banned We've all got in China. Claims to fit. So there we go. I, I had this idea for a, a fashion spread when I was on newspapers to what... what you know how to be a, a well-dressed Chinese dissident, right? And the headline would be "Don't be a Tiananmen Square." Very but, good. But it never got taken. never got published. Never got taken. No. Sorry, strange that. No, yeah. Now enough. let's hear your second uh, plank of the uh, of the week. Okay, uh, I'm going to go for uh, the <laughs> captain of the Ever Given. Oh yes. Uh, who uh, well apparently done. cannot steer his vast vessel <laughs> through a straight <laughs> canal I Boris known and as the Suez Canal. <laughs> I mean, uh, and he's, he's only got to do one thing. Really, I know. Isn't he? I know. Keep it You're straight. Just got to go straight. Mate. Come on! Don't you turn know. it. Left. A, don't go left yeah. a bit. Yes, the Suez Canal is not, it's not known for its twists and turns. <laughs> it's not a difficult navigation task. Yeah, it's a canal. But he said he got it. He got it jammed into uh, the, the uh, Suez Canal. Turns out that. Uh, he could have been speeding, he was going too fast really? apparently, yeah. and they're blaming the wind. Uh, and of course this cost... But, 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 hold on, hold on, this bow is the same height as the Shard building in London. Yeah, It's 400 metres long, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so if you stood it next to the Shard, it would be bigger, taller. So how do you speed in that? That's lengthwise it's tall. Yeah, how yeah. did that... How I don't think it's, it's yeah, taller it's not than higher the Shard. Than well, you know, but, you know, on no, 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 if you stood it on its... You mean yeah, if you lay the Shard yeah. down? Yeah, uh, that's what you mean. Yeah, but, it's a, but it's a vast it, vessel. Yeah. Right, big. Yeah. So how can it speed and be driven? You know. Well, it, well there's, a, there's a very low speed limit there. I think it's about ten kilometres an hour or something, and he was going too fast. They yeah. say, uh, but of course this caused the biggest shipping uh, traffic jam in the history of marine life, yes. and uh, it was costing seven billion pounds a day and by an to the world economy. By an interesting coincidence, I think it was on its way to China, wasn't it? Uh, I think it was coming from China. Coming from China to Rotterdam. Okay. From China to Rotterdam, and it's a, a Japanese-owned boat with a uh, Indian crew. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you and I, Mike, before we started recording this uh, excellent edition of Plank of the Week, were desperately. So this is another slight plank. Is the press of the world? Yes. Desperately trying to find the name of this mm. bungling capper. Yeah. Uh, captain, this useless skipper, right. and nowhere can you find the only The only no. reference to the no. captain I could find was that the captain was slightly injured in the uh, impact, right? Yeah. But it doesn't say how badly, but I mean, maybe because we've now got this kind of very supine press, as Kevin says in the world, maybe we've been asked not to name him. Because of some kind of reprisal or something. I mean, I don't know. Well, but his well, name we is bring nowhere. should the headmaster of Batley Grammar School. <laughs> <laughs> name, or get that charity group to help. <laughs> yeah. Just give it's us a charity his name. Group. Come on, give us his charity. name. But it does seem bizarre, doesn't it, that you can't find his name is. anywhere? Because in the yeah. old days, you'd have the name, you'd have the old yeah. who, what, yeah, where, no, it's when. True, actually. Yeah. And yeah. we don't have it. And so yeah. I can only assume that they haven't given it out. It's a, yeah, I mean, the sun would have a picture of Is this the worst yeah. sailor yeah, ever? Yeah, the worst sea captain. I mean, do you remember something calamity? Well, do you remember Captain Hazelwood? Who was the guy responsible for for, for ditching the old uh, Exxon Valdez yeah. up mm. in uh, up in the northwest uh, frontier, yeah. up near Seattle? Yeah, was yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and been creating the, one, of, one of the world's biggest uh, crude oil spills yeah, that's right. because he mm. was drinking on the bridge. And he, for a long time, Captain Hazelwood became the kind of poster boy for any anyone who did anything mm. when they were drunk. Mm. And he was ridiculed, I think. Mm. And he probably had to give up mm. being a being a skipper. To but yeah, so but that to the was the captain of that boat. We have to say, ever given any thought to a new career? <laughs> uh, yeah, good. so he's definitely worth a plank of the week. Very good. You're but really it, on it, form today with the old puns. It did. <laughs> well, it's the other nice. Ever given? Would, Very good. I like that. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm allowed to say that, aren't I? Yeah. But it did so, give us the funniest picture of the week as well, 
Which what, the was sideways? That tiny little crane yes. next to it. I know, I know. it wasn't trying well, to push it off, but it was yeah. funny, wasn't it? But that was, you know, I was just surprised they managed to do it as quickly as they did. Yeah. But, uh, oh. It's back up and running now. And now everything's flowing smoothly through smoothly. the Suez Canal. Mm. Very good. Mm. Well done. My mum's been through there. Has she? Mm. Okay. On, on one of those hideous cruise liner things oh. that, she, that people I enjoy. I don't fancy that. No, don't fancy it. She's it's very impressive. I'm she's sure that far away from yeah, the edge. Re they really are squeezed. Yeah, literally, right, yeah. yeah, by inches. But maybe anyway, they need to widen it a bit. Doesn't know what he's doing. So that if somebody crashes into the side, they can get round it. Yeah, right? there's an idea. <laughs> I could be a, an engineer. Yeah, you in know, the Suez Canal. Well, make the Suez Canal a bit wider, guys. Yeah, you know, yeah, in the Suez Canal, don't try and overtake. <laughs> maybe it was like the little digger was trying to do though, make it just a little bit wider. Yeah. yeah so who's mm. your second one then? Second one. Oh God, I'm got another woman here. This another woman. Like, good. Yeah. This is, um, as the news breaks today, that the Clapham Common um, uh, Police, who are policing uh, the Sarah, Ever Sarah Everard um, Memorial yes. um, Gathering. Vigil. It wasn't a pro it was vigil, thank you very well, much. Well, they called That's it a vigil for a for. while. Anyway, guys, so the Clapham Common Police have come out, they've marked their own homework, and they didn't do anything wrong. No shock. But this, I'm nominating for the plank this week, um, the lovely Patsy Stevenson. Is this the redhead? The, the, yeah, I mean, she's a gorgeous young woman, the, the redhead. The very, who's very distinctive hair. Very distinctive. Um, <laughs> gorgeous young woman she was pictured having our um being arrested um and looking at the camera directly with four coppers nearly on her it's shocking it was great a shocking picture. it was a great picture it was a shocking picture and as a woman i thought oh my god you know there's big burly coppers kneeling on that poor young woman what on earth is going on then then it uh, turns out then it turns out that young miss our uh, um stevenson. stevenson is actually not exactly as pure as a driven slush. No. No. She's an actress. She's, she's she? an actress. Mm. Um, she's an agitator. Yeah. And she's written this didn't week. Didn't I see her in lots of hit TV shows? Oh, no, I didn't, did no. I? No. No. She's not a um, very successful actress. It'd be like Meghan Markle. She, Could yeah. be actress, related. Yeah. Well, at least she's anyway, been in something. But this though. week, I mean, which well, is fine. I mean, you know, look, women had a, a right to be there. It was a very emotional thing. And the, and the whole Sarah Everard thing is just incredibly sad. However, well, they weren't socially distancing, though, were they? Well, no, they weren't, but they so were arrested. They, they were arrested well, for they didn't really have a right. Well, the police, some people. the police constabulary inquiry, inspectorate inquiry, said that they were in uh, absolutely the right. The police, because they were in fear of COVID spreading yeah. by the actions of the people who were at the vigil. Just doesn't spread in Yorkshire, then, though, no. does it? No, no obviously. You can't no, get no, it up there. schools exactly. in Yorkshire. No, it's no. fine. You can't get it there. Actually, would you if you were COVID? Though, would you want to go there? No, no, okay. not really. Any case, Patsy Stevenson has detracted from the whole Sarah Everard vigil and the awful story by our, um, making it all about her. How uh, surprising is that? Uh, this week she has written a very emotive piece for the independent newspaper. What about? Um, about her. Really? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. right. What mm -hmm. did she say in it? Uh, well, when I think about the vigil on Clapham Common, remember Sarah Everard, but that's enough about her, yeah. the scene plays out <laughs> in slow motion. The lights from the cameras were so powerful. The lights from the cameras. Striking She's my, an actress. Striking my eyes in the few seconds while I lay on the floor, the unrest and the anger, right. the stirring of women's voices. Uh, my, For God's sake. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, so yeah, my, my She's obviously not a writer. Whatever. My uncle had passed away just a few weeks before, oh, and oh, I found well, a badge relevant. for women's rights among his belongings. This fed a flame inside me that had always been there. As it turned out, that flame was about to become a fire. Really? Oh, God. Could, could we stop reading this, yeah. please? <laughs> <It's so Yeah. laughs> that's, that's enough of that. But it's, it's not all about her. No. No, 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 this is not. No. Well, this do you is, know, it wouldn't be surprising. This goes on for, for you know. Well, the independent, you know. And that's probably why they're not very many people buy it. Here's the thing. Um, she is an actress. Yeah. She's complaining about lights. Mm -hmm. When you're an actress, then they shine lights on you. Yeah. And take pictures of well, her. Well, I don't know. She, I don't think she's quite that good an actress oh, I see. yet. Right. Only in so I think, yeah, public yeah. playhouses. But evidently she's also, been it wouldn't surprise me to find out that the person that took the picture of her, because it was such a good picture, it was very, knew very that that was going to be a picture that they could no, take. No. I, I'm going to go and get myself arrested. I'm going to make sure they throw me on the ground. Make sure you get the mm. picture. Yeah. I'm sorry to be cynical, but, you know. I, I, look, I, I wasn't cynical initially. I thought, oh, my God, that's a shocking image, that poor woman. But the more that it's gone on and then writing a piece like this, completely distracting from what we should be thinking and feeling about yeah. Sarah Everard, everything that went on that night and the appalling case we but still have to But this is the me, come. me, it's not just the me generation. It's, it's me. the me, me, me generation now, isn't it? Well, and I mean, like she will say, no doubt, that she's raising uh, the issue and that's what she's doing in the independent. Well, she's she's not just writing about herself. 
No, 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 this is not at all writing about herself. I've been called terrier-like. I've been labelled as bossy or loud. Well, I am loud, oh, and good. I will continue to be loud. Great. Like the suffragette. Yeah. But you're bossy as well. Well, she hasn't thrown herself under any horses yet, has she? No, she threw herself under four burly Some, coppers. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. It's true, though, isn't it? You know, everybody knows that totally... Uh, I will not be silenced. They've got the right to protest. they got the right to protest. Well, what happened... Uh, didn't yesterday, uh, Monday, uh, suddenly we could, were allowed to meet five other people mm. as long as we socially distance. Yes. That's the amount we're allowed to gather right. Right, as of yesterday. Yeah. This was even before that. So wh why are you allowed to do that? Because I think it might be against the coronavirus. Well, it is. No, I'm not saying that I love the coronavirus no. laws, but that vigil was against the law. Of course it was. Absolutely right. It was, now, just, it was just sad that it's been taken away from what we should all be thinking. Yeah, but, but it was against the law. You know, sad And also, the people, let's not forget, the people organising it said they weren't going to do it. Yeah. So actually, they were uh, consulting the police and doing what the police asked them to do, and everybody else turned up anyway. Mm. Yeah. So it wasn't anything to do with Sarah Everard at no. all. Well, it was to do with a punch up with the police. Yeah. Anyway, we were talking, and you mentioned Meghan Markle there, so I'm just going to. I know, say, I'm sorry, for I, the don't record, think, I don't think anyone noticed. No. I did, but for the record, just to say, well, as usual, we will be carrying them over, uh, and I just want to mention a couple of things that they've done this week, uh, which is going to refer, I think, to one of the things you're going to talk about. They managed to get somebody else fired, uh, which is good, over in America. Marvellous, it's yeah. great, isn't Well it? done, yeah, Megan, really you know, the wrecking ball continues, and also, good old Hazza has now got two jobs, one as Chief Impact <coughs> Officer, which rather unfortunately, people are abbreviating to Chimpo, <laughs> Chief Impact Officer. That was in the Sunday Times before anybody starts giving me a hard time. I'm not going to use that. But he's getting paid, we think, in excess of a million pounds a year, basically to advise people on their mental health, for which he has no qualification other than saying that he suffers from mental oh, health he, issues. Oh, 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 he was so good with mental health that he let his poor wife, exactly. bless her, St. Megan of Work, suffer appallingly mm. over here with her own mental health. He so didn't much know what so. to do about Didn't know what to do. No. So he's and also, got a job. He's also now going to be on the foundation of a fake news organisation, uh, which is going to root out fake news, like when they lied about uh, getting married three days before. Like the whole Oprah interview, basically. Yes. Okay. That could be his first project. Mm. Anyway, so they're carrying mm. over. My, my second nomination, following hot on the heels of last week when um, Kevin nominated Jed Mercurio, I'm actually going to nominate Line of Duty, the show, because, um, like you, uh, I'm not as impressed with it as uh, I thought I would be. And I watched the second one this week. It's just average, and it? it's not even average now. It's kind of, it's, it's almost like they're trying to deliberately confuse everyone. So yeah. that you don't really know what's going on. You don't know who's on whose side. You don't know. Now, they will say this is, you know, dramatic content. But the thing that really got me about it this week was that suddenly Jimmy Savile's name got introduced into it. Now, you spoke about Jed Mercurio and how he's very woke and how he's very sort of right on last week. But here's the thing. Jimmy Savile um, was involved, they say, with a lot of, um, you know, top level police officers. But they're now saying that on a show which is a fictional show mm. as if it was a fact. Right. Now... Yeah. I'm sure that there are lots of things that we don't know about Jimmy Savile and lots of things that we do mm. know. But they then started introducing Daniel Morgan's name into it, you know, who's another real life character from police stories of the past. And I just think that's quite a dangerous place to go. If you're a crime drama, but you're supposed to be fictional, what the hell are you doing bringing in those kind of names? Well, you know that, you know, we discussed last week, which is why I nominated him for Plank of the Week, Jeb Mercurio's first uh, episode of this series six. You know, it was just a tedious, acronym-packed disaster. Yeah. Uh, and guess what? I mean, they got a great audience last week, 9.5 million or something. How guess was what? it this week? 700,000 hemorrhaged oh, really? away. That's gone. quite a lot, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's a big so that's falling almost, off. That's almost a 10% yeah, so kind of So what do we it? call it now? Decline of duty is mm, going very down. Very good. He's, he's on form today, isn't he? Hey? Well, it is. It, it, it <laughs> 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 I've written a few headlines. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's... It's just, and people have been primed mostly by the BBC hype department. Mm. This is the greatest thing ever on telly. Yeah. And they're refusing to, they're watching it, and I know what's going on. Yeah. They go, this isn't very good. And then they go, brilliant, right. compelling. Yes. But it's not. But it's, it's a okay. bit like people, have you ever read Captain Corelli's Mandolin? Mm. Right? Everybody raved on about what a great book that was, right? I started I, reading I it. I literally couldn't get through it. You and tried Wolf Hall. No, no way. Oh, my God, that is That's awful. The, what, the book or the, or the, the show? The, the, the book. Oh, right. The no. book's unreadable. Well, the show was impenetrable because it was all shot in the dark. Yeah. 
right? And everyone was whispering. Yeah. You're kind of going, what's that? <laughs> well, look, I can't see anyone and I can't hear you. Oi, Cromwell. You talk, you speak you up, put some bloody lights Oi, on. Oi, Cromwell, speak up. Come on, mate. God's sake, yeah. I, but, you know, but people have this thing where they don't want to admit that they don't get something. So they all go, oh, yes, that's great. Yeah, that's right. It's like, it's like, like when fantastic. Go, like when you go to uh, a Shakespeare, uh, one of the comedies, yeah. and they, Midsummer Night's Dream or something, yeah. and, and all these pretentious idiots in the audience start going, oh, yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. that, it's not his, funny. His version of Othello, yeah. absolutely it's brilliant. It's just Emperor's New Clothes, isn't it's it? It's like the opera as well, yeah. people go to the opera, I hate the opera. Right? I've, I've tried the only thing once. I like about the opera is the restaurant at the top of the uh, the, the opera house in Covent Garden, which is very good. And in the summer, you can sit outside, <laughs> lovely. Um, but sit through four hours of an opera. Yeah, yeah that's terrible. I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you what is worth it, um, if you must even though it's rubbish. Ballet, really boring. I hate ballet. Really boring. But I love you ballet. get lots and lots of break intervals because the dancers get knackered. Yeah. So you can all go... So you Do you know what I ten, really ten hate about the ballet? I once things. went to see the Bolshoi, right? At the Lincoln Centre in New York. Oh, wow. Because um, uh, they were in town and that was my treat. It was you know? a thing, yeah. So oh, I yes. went, with, went with my sister and her then boyfriend and my then wife. And it was like... It was like, why can I hear all that? So that's what it was like. I said, well, why don't they play the music like louder? tap dancing. It's like, like tap dancing. So me and, and, and my sister's bloke went off at lunch, lunchtime, half time, and went to the pub. Didn't watch the second I, half. I, I, love I think ballet. we paid quite a lot of money for it as well. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I don't ballet. like ballet, but it you do get lots of intervals. You can get drunk at a ballet. Well, we did. We not is only there any did way we, to get through it? Well, we got drunk and didn't come back. That was the thing yeah. we did. <laughs> Excuse me. Compared to some things, uh, let me think, uh, golf. Ballet Why bring golf brilliant. into it? What's that got to do with golf it? is a very healthy endeavour played by many men and many women. No, it's not. It's an excuse for blokes to go and dress badly. What about not women? True. Huh? What about women? Well, oh, we're not allowed to play most of the time, aren't we? Well, no, that's not really rules the case. Rules is rules. You can not. only play no, no. in the middle of the night, and provided you're a well, company. Well, you're day. implying that it's a bloke's sport. Well, yeah, because it's dull and you dress badly. But it's not a bloke's sport, though. Well, it is. No, it's not. There are female professional golfers. Have you never heard of the women's tour? On both sides no, of the because I'm, I'm too busy watching it's ballet. It's extremely lucrative. Yeah. I mean, who knew that she was into ballet and not you know, golf? I like ballet. Yeah, that tennis. Ballet is yeah, great. that tennis. You... That's got women in yeah. it as well. Well, you, you say just that. Just well, are you sure about you're that? You're dismissing all <laughs> sports because only blokes play them. No, yeah. most blokes play golf more. Do than you know what I always say at this juncture is that you've only got a view of some golf. What you haven't got a view of is all golf. Because in Scotland, for example, golf is a very working class sport. Everybody plays it mm. because it's their and national sport. And women play sport. it all over the world. It's their national sport. It's not true to say and, it's a man's sport. And millions of people enjoy You don't understand ballet. Although I can tell you a story about Pelham Country Club, which I used to be a member of in America. And a bloke uh, there who was a member of the club got divorced, right? And uh, he brought his new wife to the club. And his old wife turned up one day and they said, what are you doing here? And she went, well, I've, I've come to, you know, ride by the pool and have some lunch. And they went, no, oh, sorry, you're not married to him anymore. He wouldn't let her in. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way, that's sorry, the way that's the way it used to be. Anyway, uh, and your third, in some places, your third uh, plank, trap. Kevin. Right, right, OK, once Dawn, Dawn's finished being sexist about golf, uh, let's move on to my third nomination, on, which Get is Chief it. Constable Simon Bailey. Uh, he is the National Police Chief's Council Child Protection Lead. That's what he's called. Lead. So he's m very involved in the reaction to the rape culture scandal, uh, largely at private schools, but also some state, yes. schools, uh, state schools as well. Uh, now, uh, fine, and he's encouraging parents who believe uh, that their kids are victims of uh, rape or sexual yes. abuse to come forward, but he's also encouraging parents to shop their kids to the police, yeah. which is, you know, it's just not going to happen, is it? But this is what, uh, you know, I'm all for the police. Well, also, how do you know? I mean, if you're a parent, as I am, um, you're clearly not going to shop your teenage son for something yeah. that you don't know that he's you done. And the schools, the schools have been reluctant to do it as well. I mean, what slightly worries me about this, I mean, we're being told this is a ticking time bomb, mm. massive scandal. And, you know, I have no knowledge at all of what it is. But, uh, and it could be the, t the tip of a terrible iceberg. Yeah. But uh, there's no names involved so far. Mm. This is just 7,000 people putting stories on. It's an anonymous it. website, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. You can uh, say uh, whatever uh, you so want. So people say, oh, it's not the time, you know, we don't have to name names. Well, I think you do, actually. Mm. Uh, but anyway, this is what... So I'm all for the police being proactive about yeah. this. Uh, uh, I'm not that keen on the idea of schools shopping 
their pupils to the police or parents shopping their pupils to the uh, their kids to the police. Uh, I don't think that necessarily is a healthy. Well, thing it depends to do. on what evidence there is. Uh, yeah, it? exactly right. Now, which brings me to my point. Yeah. This is why Chief Constable Simon Bailey is one massive great plank. This is what he said: If parents are aware. Uh, that their son or their daughter has been a victim of abuse, then please come forward and report the abuse. Their account will be believed and we will deal with it appropriately. When are these coppers going to learn? They cannot say this. You cannot say your account will be believed. It isn't your job as a copper to automatically believe people. No. It isn't your job as a copper to turn the police force into an institutionally gullible pile of morons mm. who accept anything anyone t tells them just because they're a victim. What Mr Bailey ought to realise is it is a policeman's job to be automatically sceptical yeah. of anything they are told. Anything yeah. from <coughs> anyone. You will be believed must be eradicated from the police vocabulary. In fact, they were told this after Operation Midland, mm. the ludicrous VIP pedo ring yes. scandal that ruined so many lives. They were told this, you will be believed, which yes. is what they did to Carl Beach. Mm. They came in, told them fanciful stories, <laughs> and they had a policy to believe, yeah. and therefore lives were ruined, um, m m tens of millions of pounds were wasted, coppers, careers were ruined uh, on the back of this ludicrous policy, you will be believed. Mm. So Simon Bailey, for saying that everyone who reports a school rape will be relieved, I mean, this is, is a trouble, massive plank. But the problem is for them, they're doing that because they believe that some people don't come forward because they don't I mean, think they're going to be relieved. But it's not good enough. No, I know that, but they still, they're just not very clever at sort of articulating yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I think, think. I think the problem with this, are, um, what he's said, is the, uh, Harry's articulated, I think you're right, and that we do have have a problem being serious so we do have a problem well do we we, we don't know yet, we do, do we? we do have a, women, a problem with women in this country who feel like they can't report sexual assaults or rape because they will not be taken seriously and i think it is important that we make it clear that if you well, have well no but you can't tell them they will be believed well maybe well, they should you say have to, you have to believe somebody no 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 Suppose lead. they're lying. Well, they might be lying, but that's what the oh, investigation. I see. So that's, I all think, right. I that's think what the investigation is. Well, no, I, I'm, I, I'm not. I I'm not. I'm still think. Not, well, no, I'm still, not. I'm really not. No, all right, not enough. Up, not. I still think that my "you will be believed" would be a better phrase. Yes. I think he's right about that. What do you mean? You will be you, believed. Sorry, you will be uh, taken seriously. Taken seriously. Taken seriously. Yeah. It's fine. As I said, there was a problem in the way this was articulated. It's a much better thing to say. No, no, we have to. We have to expunge. The coppers have got to stop saying "you will be believed." It isn't their job. They mustn't believe anyone until they've checked it out. You, you have to take people seriously when yeah, they are fine. making but that's an right accusation that. of sexual assault and rape. There, and there women, is a way of dealing Women with need to come forward and they shouldn't be questioned on what they're wearing, where they were going, who they were with, their sexual history. Oh, you've got topless pictures of yourself on your yeah, mobile phone. Yeah, but that's phone. not covered by you will be believed either. Uh, no, it's so not. So there's no point I'm just saying, saying it. The articulation in that was wrong, yes. but women do need to come forward. I still think he's a plank. Let's it's go with you. It's a plank, and it's not just girls, by the way. I we're think talking it's about not, boys Absolutely, well. yeah. of course rape we are. Rape victims aren't always women. But when we're, we're also victimised... And also, rape, alleged rape victims uh, lie as well. Of course, look, look so we're not you saying... you will be believed is bizarre you will and be absurd. be taken seriously. But this is not just about victimising women, because there's a school in our, um, Australia, in, in Melbourne, Brower College, in Warnamaboo. It's a hard one to say that. Uh, yeah, it's a very well, hard very one well to say. Very well done for trying. Where, uh, and these are boys as young as 12 were asked to stand up in assembly and apologize yeah. to their their classmates their female, so their classmates, female classmates yeah for for men being uh, men, guilty of rape. men generally for i know men yeah. General, yeah, yeah. For absolutely well this is These it i mean kids. there is now this culture where you know if you're a man uh, you won't be believed if is, is the, the other inference of that or if you are the alleged assailant you will not be believed 
because you've been accused of something. Therefore, and they did, they did a lot of this with, with domestic violence yeah. disputes as well. Yeah, of course. Where they believed the person. Well, he, he said, she said. Yeah, and unfortunately, whether you like it or not, an awful lot of rape cases come down to... He said, she said. He yeah. said, yeah. and of course. then she said, and then, then this happened. Oh, and, sadly, you know, that's the trouble. You know, this yearning for much better uh, statistics in terms of, of successful convictions of rape uh, is just pie in the sky. Mm. The problem is, is, is that defence, uh, that rape, really sadly and tragically, but it is the case, is the easiest offence to defend. Mm. Uh, because in the end, you can establish reasonable doubt. He said that, she said that, how do you know yeah. which one is telling exactly. the truth? And, every, also, every in, and also in the end, in the end, if you are as a police officer first answering, asking the questions, mm. and you get called into the dock mm. to give your evidence, and the clever barrister says, but you told my client that you believed her, now you're saying something else so it kind of it slightly yeah. can, can damage the case as well mm -hmm. because yeah. uh, because <coughs> you're basically saying well you've already said well, you believe her it. before she's told you what happened that's why they mm -hmm. do it and uh, after the uh, operation midland debacle uh, there was an official inqu uh, 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 public inqu inquiry into that and the police were told to stop they're ordered mm. by this inquiry uh, main, among their findings you must stop telling people you they yeah. will be believed mm. Uh, and uh, the uh, and you must also stop referring to uh, alleged rape victims as rape victims. Yes, uh, you can't do that because once you start saying you refer to the defend the the plaintiff as it were as the victim then it's as if they are yeah. the victim. Now, at that stage, they're just the alleged victim. They were told, the cops, uh, by the Mi Operation Middle Inquiry, you must stop yeah, telling right. people they but will I mean, be in the end as well, you the must problem stop calling them yeah. victims. The and they haven't. Yeah. They haven't. They refuse The problem, to. though, as well, is they that you're also, to. you're kind of diminishing the real cases by saying you believe absolutely everyone that says that, that, that something has happened to them. Uh, look, and that's the I, other I, thing. I, 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 agree I think we spent enough time on this The already. language was wrong, but the yeah, but it's the language. It's their official language. It's not just that. But that's why Can we not get on about this? that's enough of that what that conversation we've done it for too long now we're running out of time you know we have got a time limit here so can we have your third plank please oh my god you're being yeah, so assertive mike you're like holding yourself come on get on with it let's go <laughs> not like a woman to talk too much is it gents any case oh, god you have been so news sexist night. today shut up next thing you'll be telling me women play golf well, why would we? We have better things to do with our time. Do play would you get on with it, you two, and stop bickering? <laughs> Christ. Yes, Dad. Come in on. any case, my third nomination is CBS. Yes. The American TV broadcaster who this week let go or sacked or she walked out. Who knows what the truth is? Sharon Osbourne, because Sharon Osbourne was on her morning show, which is a bit like Loose Women in America. Yeah. Imagine the right. horrors of that. Um, it's Only called words. The Talk. The Talk. The Talk. Thank you very much, Kevin. God, you do have a use. Uh, yeah, The Talk. So, um, but Sharon was on there with her uh, female co-host who happens to be black and she was Sharon was defending Piers Morgan who um, over the whole Meghan Markle mm. she's always around isn't she um, interview with Oprah um, and for this reason Sharon has been accused of racism herself and has had to leave the show but do you know what's annoying <sighs> the most annoying thing about this is that she was made to apologize Right, because after she defended Piers, they then all kind of had a collective hissy fit mm. and brought her back onto the set the next day to say to her um, that you don't understand that you are unconsciously racist because you're friends with somebody who's racist. So not only did they accuse Piers of being racist, which he blatantly is. Well, there was they, no point that Piers was right. racist. So, so they made her apologise and she's still gone. Yeah. So she shouldn't have apologised, well, should it she? Turned, no, because it turned no, because it turned into a witch hunt then. Yeah. Because everybody she's ever worked with on this particular TV channel then racked their brains to think of something offensive. Sharon Osbourne, who let's face it, is quite career offensive, of isn't she? Being yeah. feisty, I think is the polite way yeah. of putting it. Um, you know, and saying, well, she called me this, she called me that, and okay, fine. And and so CBS has said we can no longer work with this woman. Now, the the irony is they've employed her for eleven seasons of no, this show. These are all historical accusations. Why are they suddenly so important now, I mm. wonder? But this is what these people now do, isn't it? They go back and find things that could be misconstrued it's, and it's then deliberately misconstrue hunt. them. And, and this <laughs> awful situation now that anyone who has the temerity to uh, suggest that uh, 
anything Meghan Markle said in that interview might not be true mm. is a racist. Yes. Yeah. It is the shutting it's down of sensible do discussion. Some believers. Shutting down of sensible discussion. Yeah. So Piers saying, I don't believe a word she said, that makes him a racist. It's mm. ridiculous. No, 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 no. Absolutely so, ridiculous. So basically, if you follow that to the nth degree, then Piers can only take issue with fellow white, straight, middle-aged men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. white people yeah. can't discuss racism mm. no. because we don't understand it. No. Well, you know, I, it's all due respect to every b people who uh, are the victims of racism, you know, and it's terrible. Now, they would have a deeper understanding it of, uh, of it than perhaps us, but it really isn't a tricky concept. No. I think we can understand racism. Exactly, yeah, I think that's absolutely right. Mm. But yeah, but as I said earlier, with Megxit uh, being just about a year, uh, from now back. Oh, what a lovely anniversary. It's like the first anniversary <sighs> this week. Um, you know, she continues to wreck people's careers well, with the kind of the, the, and, the reverberation and, of that bleeding interview. You know, and on social media, all the people defending her are the sort of like, you know, woke, be kind, be inclusive. Oh, the be brigade. kind people, they're really but, kind, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who want to not only sort of like you lose your, your job and, and cancel culture is, is, is far worse than that, but then also send you death threats. Mm. I That's mean, both, nice, isn't it? both Piers Morgan and Sharon, I'm no fan of Sharon Osbourne, by the way, and Sharon Osbourne have had to hire extra security yeah. because of the death threats. I, I mean, Piers has a little girl at home with her. I him. know. It's absolutely shocking how these people are. Hmm. <laughs> You've just thrown your pen down and disgusted. I'm <laughs> disgusted. So, so angry. I'll tell you what, so angry, this last one's going to make you really down. angry, right? It's your friend and mine, your, your a chief medical officer, Mr. Chris Witty. Sir oh, Chris. Sir Chris. Sir oh, Chris. Sir, Sir Chris Never Witty. Never as a man deserved a man oh my as God. much as... Did you see him this week, though, at the new, brand new, oh, sort of, you yeah, know, the two uh, briefing room? Million pounds the two and a half million pound briefing room, right, where he's talking about the old, um, the wall, right? Now, he seems to have um, changed his view of the wall. You know what the wall is, don't you? The wall is all the vaccinated people that mm. are going to stop COVID mm. from coming into mm. the country, right? Because the COVID is going to meet the wall. However... This week, he's decided that the wall's got a leak in it, right? And he's calling it a leaky wall. Did, uh, they, he said, uh, he what, actually, what, what, I mean, this, trust me, this is not a medical term. He says <laughs> that there's now a leaky wall, and that's the problem, because there are leaks in the wall which might allow the COVID to come back in. And he says, this guy, the same guy who says it's safe to play football, even golf, right? But football in particular, blokes, of course, yeah. in particular, yeah, because you don't I normally... I bet Chris Whitty plays golf, actually. I don't think he does anything he does. in which he enjoys himself. He literally <laughs> does not have an enjoyable bone in his body. Can you imagine sitting next to this guy on a plane? I think, he's oh, a no. good, I think he's a good man. He's just wrong. I don't think he's a bad guy. I think he's a good man. But he's incredibly he tedious. he's doing good. He's, he's incredibly... I, I think he's just wrong. He's but he's a year terrifying people. But he's also told people... But he thinks that's important yeah. to do. Oh. He's committed to There's ways of getting court. messages But he's there, also the discuss. same guy who says, yeah, it's all right, you can go out and play football, you can slide tackle somebody, they can fall on top of you, but what you can't do under any circumstances is go anywhere near anyone outside. You can't hug them. No. You can't kiss no. them. Uh, no. You can't hold hands. No. You can't touch them. No. What is wrong with him? He's a plank. He is a plank. Mm -hmm. Imagine a picnic, right, with five people. One of them's witty. You're all on your own. It's like sort of some kind of ridiculous scene from, um, you know, the Forty Thieves, where you're all sitting on your own rug. Mm. Because you can't sit on anybody else's rug because that's illegal. You know, you know the, what the, the hell's going on? <laughs> you know, that's the ridiculous thing I read during the week was that you know if you're a couple getting married, you're allowed to get married now, evidently. If you're a couple getting married but you don't live together, yeah. In theory, it's illegal to kiss the bride yes. at the ceremony. So <laughs> when, so when, the, so when you get to what? that bit, the, presumably the vicar says you may now not kiss the bride. How yeah. did we get there? Huh? By the by the way, what How? was this? So it's, it's the new relaxation of the rules is you no longer le need exceptional reasons to get married. So what, what, what they took, what they took, what, well, the that, what if she's pregnant? What was it before? Is that an exceptional the, yeah, reason? Yeah, you know, you now have to know the person you're going to yes. get married to or something like that. You have to have met And also, them what, did they not say that the father of the bride has to walk two metres behind yeah. if he's given her <laughs> you away? You only have six people there, but right? But genuinely, there are people uh, out there, right, just... who ask about what the rules are. I know. You know and some of these journalists... Oh, oh don't get me started do on those think, press conferences. Um, do you think I might be able to go and meet my long-lost brother? who lives in Wales. No, I'm afraid you can't do that um, because you can't go to Wales. Just do it, just do it. Yeah. You know, how about you just do it? You I know. know. Oh, I by know. the way, to, uh, your favourite subject, Dawn, you've seen oh. that, 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 this golf course, golf club, and half of it is, goes across the border. Oh, yeah. So it go, it's at the Welsh-English border. Oh. So the uh, Welsh, because they, they've got their... Uh, 
rules re relax. The Welsh players can play all 18 holes, right. but the English can't. <laughs> No, <laughs> so, so there's mad. this divided. Do you remember there was, there was a, there was a pub, this? wasn't there? There was a pub right on the border yeah. somewhere near Shropshire, yeah. where the car park was in England, yeah. and the rest of the pubs in Wales. And when they shut the pub in Wales, you could only go in the car park, <laughs> but they couldn't bring you a drink. Oh, you going? It's just insane. How do we end up here? This is just bonkers, isn't it? How did we end up here? It's terrible. Absolutely awful. Oh. Well, so that's our nine. So now we've got to get them down to the uh, three. Blimey. I, 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 Who wants to go first? I can't remember what was what. No, well, this is all about bickering, you know. Yeah. Maybe I should make you two the first two planks. Yeah. And, and then we'll give the third one yeah, to Witty. Yeah, you win. Yeah. Then I, it's not about winning. It's about taking part. <laughs> Sod that. Right. So mm. do you want to choose mine? Do you? Go on, then. Just to refresh my memory. Okay, got I've got China. <laughs> China. 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 You've got Chris Witty. Oh, and pen's run out. Your pen's run out because you threw it down <laughs> in a fit of peak. <laughs> God, this Shana is getting out of hand. Why a line of duty. This down? Because I'm a journalist, Kevin. Well, you can't remember. No. Don't I'm tell obviously the, not. Don't tell anyone in <laughs> China. You said it three seconds ago. <laughs> China. <laughs> Chris Whitty. Line of duty. <laughs> Look at the state of it. Has anybody got any <laughs> insulin? Don't say that. <laughs> she needs some insulin. <laughs> I'm going to go for Chris Whitty because I Chris Whitty. Guess he's Always just a such a plank. A you can't go I'm wrong sorry. with Chris Whitty. There no. we go. Thank you very much indeed. Right, oh, why don't God. you tell Kevin what your three are? Um, <laughs> Jennifer. Can, you they are? can you remember them? No. You need to write them down. Jennifer, uh, Jennifer Acuri. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Good one. Um, Patsy Stevenson, the red haired right. bird. Um, and CBS, the news channel in uh, America. Yeah, well, we did. I like. Uh, they're a really good three, actually, seriously. Thank uh, you, Kevin. C CBS, we did the other week, so I'm going to let them off the hook, uh, even though they're a disgrace. Uh, the red haired girl from the, what's her name? Patsy. Yeah, well, exactly. Patsy I mean, yeah, well, I don't really want to give her yeah, any more publicity. I don't, you know, uh, go away. Return to the obscurity for which you were designed. Nice hair, please. Uh, so, definitely uh, for me, uh, the fabulously ludicrous <laughs> Jennifer Arcuri, <laughs> the Prime Minister's former. Uh, is on the side <laughs> while he was married. So they for the most boring sex scandal. Yeah, it really is. So boring. Yeah. So boring. That's funny. Right, so Kevin, you <laughs> tell me your three. Uh, I went for uh, the headmaster of Batley Grammar School, yeah. Gary, Gary Kibble, first because of his uh, over-hasty and unnecessary apology. Yes. Uh, then for the useless and as yet anonymous captain of the Ever Given, Ever Given Any Thought to a New Career, because you can't get through the straight... Uh, Suez Canal <laughs> cost us seven billion quid a day. So, Captain, uh, Captain Calamity there, and finally uh, Chief Constable Simon Bailey, who used that uh, phrase that should be banned: uh, "You will be yes. believed to people." Absolutely people right. Now I'm betwixt and between on this one because I think the uh, Captain of the Ever Given is a definite plank, and it's so <laughs> it's, it is, it and is, it's, it's the big it's, story of the week, isn't and it, it is funny. I know. I know it shouldn't be funny, but it, it is shouldn't funny. be. But we came in on Monday, and everyone was kind of going. You know, this is a very serious story. You kind of, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's really yeah, awful, absolutely. I mean, yeah. luckily nobody got hurt. I think it's going to have to be him. I'm going to, I'm going to say though, we're going to make the uh, Mr. Kibble from Batley Grammar number four. Yeah, cause because I think he's certainly he's in there. That, that, he's in there. If it, wasn't, if it wasn't for the captain of this ship, mm. he would be in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that means the top three are Chris Whitty, Jennifer Arcuri, and the captain of the Ever Given. So, what are we going to do? Mm. I'd like to go for. I mean, I, I fancy Jennifer Arcuri. Yes. Who said nobody ever? <laughs> yeah. if, if you know what a... Hang on. That's sexist. That's sexist. Um, I, I would go along with that. I would definitely go along with that. So would I, because that yeah. means I win. Not that it's a competition. Not that it's a competition. No, no. As long as you don't argue anymore, I, I don't care what you do. Your one, so it was a debate. It was a terrible argument. It's a debate. It's a very unseemly. Argument. Very unseemly for the sort of high level of uh, intellectual. <laughs> well, Mike and I that try. We on this we're show. trying not to be sexist, and you're just being sexist yeah. right in centre. So we've got. What's well, the used to? No, no, because you say women don't play golf. God. No, Can we not go golf, back to that? More men play golf. <laughs> God's sake. Because it's boring. All right, listen. Do you not wish to have the results? Or would you rather just keep arguing? You can do your own well, show. Probably, <laughs> probably the latter. <laughs> Turn up half an hour later. On. So, uh, Chris Whitty, number three, captain of the Ever Given. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if anybody knows what the captain's name is, by all means, let us know. Yeah. Because that would be handy. Um, but the final plank of the week nomination and victory is for Jennifer Arcuri. Yeah. Now, you'd like to say businesswoman, 
But really, <coughs> she's just Boris Johnson's bit on the side, isn't she? I'm afraid. Yep. But now she's Plank of the Week. So finally, well she's done, been Jennifer. recognised Jennifer. for something. Doing it for women everywhere. Well done, Jennifer. We'll see you next time. <laughs>